Yo, 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 what's up boys and girls? Welcome to the live stream today. Uh, in this video, this live stream, I am gonna talk about some of the newer announcements that Apple just recently announced, as well as the recent acquire of uh, the Realm Mobile SDK, which a lot of people like to use for saving data onto their mobile devices, such as the iPhone here. And, uh, yeah, so recently MongoDB acquired Realm for I think about $40 million, uh, technically $39 million, and the startup had raised just $40 million. So overall, I don't I don't know exactly if they're making any money off of that transaction there, but hopefully today's stream will be interesting. And by the way, I am gonna have probably like a, a beer every time a whole live stream, and uh, I'll try to catch some of the questions that you guys have in the live chat. Uh, I think today's Thursday. Uh, how are you guys doing? Hopefully everything's going all right at work, school, and you know, everything else that's wonderful in life. Cheers from Mexico, cheers from California. Um, California is pretty large. I live in North uh, Northern California. A lot of people refer to it as NorCal because obviously Northern California and let's see so once i get a couple of more people joining the stream here just wanted to read out a couple of the announcements that were announced that were kind of sent through my email and you know through the twitter feed you can see a lot of these nice little kind of side distractions because you know you don't always want to be programming 24 7 some of these distractions are uh, kind of serve as a little nice timeout. Uh, I want to kill myself. It was a long day at school. Hey, man, I, I've been there. I have definitely wanted to. Uh, how much do I want to get into it? <laughs> I really hated school. So way back in the day when I was still in uh, UC Berkeley, so that's where I went to school. Uh, it took me five to six years to graduate out of UC Berkeley. And I remember I just hated the major that I was um, actually applied in. Uh, so if you guys don't know, I was I graduated with an applied mathematics degree. I was studying a lot of computer science classes. And other than the like one or two CS classes that I was taking, the rest of my schedule was filled with just a ton of courses that I hated going to. Um, the courses themselves were... I mean, they were okay, but the worst thing about the courses were the professors. And I think the worst thing about the professors is you can get an overall sense that most of them didn't care too much about the students. Like out of 10 instructors, 10 professors, only about one of them really gave a shit about you. Like they, they're really in it for um, the research money and the research topics that they can discuss or you know write their papers on. Okay, so enough talk. Uh, let's see. We have about 70 people in today's live stream. Um, uh, hello, Simon from Sweden. Uh, is Realm the same as Cloud Firestore? So kind of. Uh, if you guys aren't fully aware of what Realm is, just do a quick Google search. But in a nutshell, uh, Realm is just a kind of an SDK that allows you to save data into a persistent cloud, whether or not it be mobile or for the web, uh, you know, you can access the same data set using that SDK. Uh, it was really helpful. Uh, I built a couple of different, very simple, straightforward applications with the Realm SDK. I found it to be fairly easy to integrate within an application. Yeah, a lot of people actually like using Realm too. Um, it's a little different compared to what Firebase has to offer. So Firebase offers you the entire full suite such as push notifications, analytics, crash reporting, and just everything that's under the sun, I think. Uh, Realm doesn't offer you everything, which can be a good thing and a bad thing. Overall, I think it's a good thing. Okay, so now that I have talked to your ear off for the last couple of minutes, let me just go over some of the interesting things that I've been seeing on the internet. So the report is that uh, Apple is to announce ARKit updates at WWC 2019, including the OS support for AR headsets. 
Uh, we don't know exactly what that's going to uh, what that's going to entail and what the SDK is going to look like and to what extent uh, the support is going to actually allow you to do. But anyways, Apple has uh, continuously iterated on ARKit, its augmented reality development tool that lets creators make smartphone-based AR experiences. Uh, the company unveiled ARKit at its WWDC uh, conference in 2017. Wow, that was a long time ago, 2017. So roughly 17, 18, you know, two years ago. And uh, like, honestly, I haven't really seen any AR kit application really take off uh, other than, <laughs> I guess apps like Ikea. That's the only application that I can really see myself using in real life. And then there are like a lot of AR kit games that are somewhat helpful and somewhat fun to play. Uh, so a report from 9to5Mac holds that this year's WWC could see yet more new additions, including OS support for stereo AR headsets. So citing, uh, citing sources familiar with development of Apple's new operating systems, uh, the report maintains that ARKit will get a new Swift-only framework. So that sounds lovely. Uh, a new Swift-only framework for AR and a companion app that lets developers create AR, uh, AR experiences visually. Uh, AR kit will also reportedly get the ability to detect human poses. That's, that sounds pretty awesome, right? So I'm just trying to think of a couple of different examples of what kind of applications we can build with these new additions. Sounds fun. We'll have to wait and see what's possible. Uh, one of the biggest claims to come from the report is the supposed announcement surrounding OS support for controllers with touchpads as well as stereo AR headsets. So I'm not exactly sure what stereo AR headset is. Is that just a headset that has, that has audio coming from both speakers? Is that, is that what it means? Uh, as with all unconfirmed reports, we're taking this with a big grain of salt. However, it, uh, it's hardly conceivable that Apple would open their software ecosystem to third-party devices. So it definitely raises the question of whether uh, we're close to bona fide uh, Apple AR headset tees or not. Uh, in any case, there's been several reports of an Apple AR headset in the making. So if Apple does release an AR headset, I will probably actually have my first time waiting in line for an Apple product. Uh, I don't think I ever waited for an Apple product before in my life. So that'll be exciting. Uh, I might have an opportunity to make a vlog out of it. Uh, so let's see, uh, Ming-Chi Kuo, uh, someone business insider called the most accurate Apple analyst in the world, uh, offered up his prediction for the Fable device last month. Uh, stating that Apple will likely begin production of, of its AR headset sometime between quarter uh, Q4 2019 and Q2 of 2020. So uh, that's pretty soon, right? Q4 of this year. Uh, furthermore, it's been reported that Apple, uh, that upcoming Apple headset could rely on the iPhone for computing, rendering, internet connectivity, and also location services. Now this comes as a stark contrast to one of the earliest reports we've seen from 2019 or 2017 by Bloomberg, which posted an Apple, an Apple AR headset would be dedicated standalone device, also stated for a 2020 release. So uh, I guess two years ago, Apple had announced or had uh, kind of mentioned that the headset would be independent of the iPhone. Seems like that is in conflict right now, or there's some contradictory statements that's being made. Uh, whatever the case, we'll have our eyes peeled for June 3rd, which is coming up in just two months, uh, you know, maybe a month and two weeks. Uh, June 3rd to June 7th, when the hardcore Apple dev community descends upon San Jose, California for this year's WWDC. Ooh. So who's, who's excited about this new AR headset announcement? I think, yeah, kind of want to see what, what's, what kind of device or what the headset is actually going to look like. Yeah, I definitely am too. If, if they do release a headset, I'll finally 
I'll finally look into the Apple ARKit SDK and make some applications with it. I think to this very day, I, I've only built like two very dummy, uh, simple dummy applications that didn't really do very much. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's kind of see what the future holds. All right, so the next story, which is another interesting story, is the acquiring of uh, the Realm SDK guys. I don't even know. I guess they're just called Realm. So again, for those of you guys that aren't totally familiar, uh, Realm is a, I guess for most of you guys, is a mobile SDK that allows you to persist data onto the mobile, uh, not mobile, but the Realm cloud servers. And if you want to access those, that, that set of data, you can also access it on the web using their uh, JavaScript library. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like Firebase, pretty much. So MongoDB announced today that it is acquiring a realm, acquiring a realm, an open source database geared for mobile applications. I don't know if they're specifically geared for mobile apps, but maybe that's like 60% of their business. And MongoDB announced that they're acquiring Realm for $39 million, so more money than I'll ever see in my lifetime. And hopefully you guys, uh, you know, can build a business that's worth more than $39 million. Uh, the startup had raised just over $40 million before being acquired today. Uh, not exactly a staggering return on investment. So, uh, you know, when you're, when you're building up a startup, you invest so much time hiring and producing a product, investing time in people, trying to get your business up and running. And ultimately the thing that you want to do is to make it profitable. Uh, it looks like they acquired or they sold, and it depends on how you look at it, but Realm decided to sell the company to MongoDB for $39 million. And uh, I guess they have to pay all that money back to the $40 million in investment money, uh, meaning they, what, made a million dollars? I don't know. What does that really mean? Did, did they, like, what are, the, what are the employees get for their stock options if this is the actual transaction? So uh, the article on TechCrunch goes on to say that it's the kind of acquisition that makes a lot of sense from a tech perspective. I don't really see why, but uh, both companies are built on the premise that data is the center of application development, although they both come at it from a bit of a different angle. With Realm, mobile, um, with Realm Mongo gets a strong mobile solution, adding to MongoDB Mobile. And it also gets the technology, user base, and engineering talent that Realm brings to the table. Uh, Elliot Horowitz, MongoDB co-founder and CTO, sees a company that will blend uh, blend well with us. Uh, Realm and MongoDB are a natural fit because we share a vision that uh, when developers can interact naturally with data, they are happier and more productive. Is that necessarily true? Is that true? Uh, I feel like whenever I'm making uh, building out an application, when the data comes back, in a REST API format. That's the format that I like to interact with the most. Uh, MongoDB gives you the data back in like a closure. So you create your model objects and then you make Mongo or you make Realm map that data into your model objects. That's essentially how most SDKs work or maybe not most, but uh, that's, how, that's how Realm works at least. So, Mm, I guess if you're, if you don't have to deal with the REST API layer and having to parse, decode the entire process, then I guess that makes sense. That's something that is, a, I guess, a win for developers. So uh, we're predictive because our products are complementary. Realm has more than 100,000 developers using its product. Wow, that's more than I had thought. So I remember a while back I reached out to Realm and wanted to see if they wanted to have a like a collaboration where I can do a couple of videos on their SDK and kind of walk people through 
at least guide people through how to use their their offerings and their products. Uh, I remember I got in contact with the actual CEO. Uh, I don't think it was Elliot Horowitz, but I got in contact with the CEO. We had discussed some details as as to the kind of videos that I can produce, uh, but ultimately at the end, I, I don't think we came to an agreement as to, you know, a definite collaboration. Yeah. And so, yeah, Realm is awesome after first try. I forgot what core data it is. Yeah. Um, so if you don't have to deal with creating your own entities like core data, I, I almost feel like core data is kind of clunky. I don't know if you guys agree with me on that. Uh, basically when, I mean, this is my personal opinion, but when you have to deal with a, like a second file, such as the core data file, or even for things like storyboard, when I have to switch from the, the code view to some other view, it switches context. I don't, I don't like that. Um, so 350 companies using its, uh, using realms data synchronization tools to move data between mobile devices and the cloud using the realm platform, according to the company. Uh, let's kind of finish off here and then we'll get back to the chat and maybe I'll try to answer some questions. <laughs> yeah, I'm having a beer and maybe I'll, uh, so I bought this, uh, six pack of, uh, Lagunitas IPA. I haven't really drank too much out of it. It's my second bottle, actually. Um, so let's see. David Ratner sees this as a way to expose Realm to more customers faster and to accelerate the roadmap more quickly than it could alone. Uh, the combination of MongoDB and Realm will establish the modern standard for mobile application development and data synchronization for a new generation of connected applications and services. So this kind of gets me thinking, um, like Realm is a, I'm not sure what database Realm uses to store all of its uh, persistent data. My guess is that it's not on a NoSQL server. So MongoDB op operates on NoSQL I don't think a realm is using NoSQL because the because realm has to maintain a huge consistency between a company's data set. And if you have MongoDB, it's really hard to maintain that that consistency. Uh, or the integrity of your database. You don't want to compromise the data. Uh, so MongoDB and Realm are fully committed to investing in the Realm database and the future of data synchronization. So it seems like they, they really like the, the data, the data syncing part of Realm. Maybe that's kind of, maybe that's why they decided to purchase Realm, uh, and taking both to the next phase of their evolution. Uh, Ratner wrote in a blog post announcing the deal. Uh, deal is expected to close in June or July and companies are working on integrations and we'll be announcing details on MongoDB World Customer Conference in mid-June. So, interesting here. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, do you have any opinions about this acquisition by MongoDB? Like, even though most of you are iOS developers, I feel like you have played around with MongoDB at least once or twice, right? Or is that a bad assumption to make on my side? Smackaroni. Damn, the buffness. Dude, the sun's out, so gun's out today. Why aren't you wearing a headset? I don't have one yet. If Apple releases the headset this year, so they, they say that they're gonna start producing or investing more time in the headset starting quarter two, Q2 of 2020. Uh, so begin production. If they actually start releasing it and they start selling this as a product, then we'll see. Maybe they'll release it with the new release of the iPhone 11. Uh, 
Uh, who knows? Okay, so let me get back to the main screen here. And let's answer some questions today. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. So who's here? Who's here? <laughs> Mirja? Mirja, LOL? Or is it M Mirjalo? Dare? Dari? Stajanov? That sounds like a Russian name. I could. Uh, Alan Madrid, I'm going to guess you're from a Spanish speaking country, from Mexico. Uh, Chad Walker. Hey, Brian, finally see uh, finally some great weather in the city. I know, right? So the great weather in the city translates to really hot weather in, in Dublin, California. Unfortunately, it's it's kind of hot today. Uh, let's see. I use Realm and uh, Realm Cloud for my production projects. Yep, it's good. Uh, cheers from Uzbekistan. Cheers, man. Hello from Syria. Cheers from Mexico and Tal Talonland. I don't know what exactly Talonland does, but sounds like a decent company. Uh, Belize SoCal. Uh, have you ever used SAP? Uh, SAP? No, haven't. Nigeria. Hello, Israel. <laughs> I'm going to send you a promo code for my app once released. 72. So again, I don't uh, I don't do reviews on paid applications, uh, regardless of anyone sending me a promo code. Uh, <laughs> okay, so these questions are really like silly. <laughs> what is your personal opinion on cross-platform development and Flutter as an example? Will native development survive? Uh, this is like a really silly question. How many times have uh, have we seen cross-platform die out? Right. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Tiwei,我在上班. Tokanzhong. Uh, well, uh, will you release, will you create a realm course someday? I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe, uh, I probably won't be creating it anytime soon since I, uh, normally when a company gets acquired, especially a tech company, some of the SDKs will, will start to change. So I don't want to create something that doesn't last for at least like a year in terms of the course. It's really hard to update the videos. Uh, -bum -bum. Friday came earlier this week. Kind of. It's almost Friday every day for me, since I don't really do any work. Uh, why don't you come to UK? So, Melissa Ramos, why don't you come to UK? There are many field of jobs that are easily suitable for you. Are there jobs where I can just sit at home and create videos all day in the UK? Uh, Cash DB, let's code. Maybe. Oh man, it's getting hotter and hotter. Maybe I turn off this light. Okay, light down. Is this working? Okay, it's working. Oh, it's getting hot. I think I'm sweating on the stream. Jesus. Uh, so this is an interesting question. What books would you recommend on Swift? Uh, sorry if, yeah. So Tyler Treadwell says, what kind of books? What kind of books do you guys recommend? I've read uh, I've read zero books on Swift, so I'm not a good person to go to. I literally have zero books on Swift. I think I've given my opinion on books before on the stream. And so people, people, people that are trying to get into development that are like studying some other field, 
you have to get out of the mindset of of standard education when you're considering programming because programming is very different uh, it's almost like the the opposite of standard education where you sit down with a book and you read 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 listen to an instructor and then you try to absorb and memorize what the instructor is telling you like that is the opposite of what you want to do for programming uh, instead when you're learning how to code you actually have to do the coding if you don't sit down and like type out the code you'll you'll retain very little of the knowledge so this is why i heavily heavily advise against against books but that's just me i feel like videos are, are more helpful than books because you can actually see a guy typing out the code and you can just copy the guy and it's very easy and since most things uh, with programming uh, is visual anyways, having a video guide you along as to what the code does visually is uh, super helpful. And I'm not just saying that because I produce videos. Uh, let's see. Uh, am I going to dub dub DC this year? Chris Kick screams from Germany. Um, uh, I don't know exactly if I'm going to go to WWDC this year. Uh, I have a friend that has a WWDC, uh, DC ticket. I'm not sure what's going to go on with that just yet. Um, I don't think he's going to go every day for the entire week. So if I can arrange somehow to get a hold of that, uh, ticket and try to make it out there maybe i can sneak in uh, da, da, da. which use of ar headset will have the biggest impact um so i'm 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 fairly confident that in the upcoming years within the next i would say five to ten years that there's going to be a way to make education more uh, I guess either interactive or just improve education in a way with the AR headset. And I mean, we can all already see that going to class, like sitting down in a physical classroom and then trying to learn that way is highly, is highly inefficient, right? We've all been there. Go to class, sit down, you fall asleep and you're not paying attention. You, you, you're just copying down notes without really understanding or wanting to learn what's going on. So with the AR headset, I hope that, you know, someone's going to come along and totally just destroy uh, the notion of sitting down in, in class and listening to Professor Blab on for an hour. Like that, that has to go away. Because... That's, that's also the opposite of what education means. You really have to, you really have to, you really have to be invested in your own education. And the current education system doesn't really allow for that. It's just a big, like, it's just a big scheme. Yeah, I'm... I'm really, uh, I'm very against the education system, actually. And having having taken so many courses through uh, the California university system, going through California public school, and having worked for more than a decade, having done education online, um, I can honestly say that the current education system is, is it doesn't meet a, a ton of requirements in my mind. And I guess the most important thing of all is that uh, you can find all the information that you need on google.com. And I'm not saying that classrooms don't help, but it, at, at this point, a classroom almost feels like a big babysitting program for students, uh, for parents that are busy trying to, to 
do their jobs and earn money and put food on the table. So, uh, how much time does it take to build Instagram without a backend? I am building something like that and learning at the same time. Well, if you check out the Instagram Firebase course on the link description below, you can kind of see how long it takes me to build out the Instagram course. I think just doing it without the videos, uh, preparing all that content probably, probably took what? like two weeks in total. And that's already with like a ton of knowledge on iOS and Firebase. Yeah. So I, I pushed out a email blast yesterday uh, telling everyone that I might add the chat, uh, like chat messaging functionality to the Tinder course, the Tinder Firestore course. So it kind of got me thinking maybe I should do the same thing for the Instagram Firebase course also. Uh, and maybe I'll do it. We'll, we'll see what happens. The thing is that I built out the, the, the game of chats series on YouTube. And at the time I, I felt like a lot of the code would be either pretty similar or exactly the same. So I didn't really feel like including the same set of code inside of that course. Meh. Um, so Brendan Hampshire says that I bought, uh, I bought three of your courses already worth every penny for anyone who has been hesitant to buy any. Uh, his videos, uh, his free videos speak for themselves. Thanks, Brendan. Yeah. If anyone's really just interested in learning Swift programming, honestly, I don't feel like it's that hard. You just need to watch someone do it in front of your eyes and you can see that it's not, it's, there's really nothing magical behind it. And uh, yeah, if you want more videos, definitely check out uh, courses in description below. Uh, how do I become iOS dev without books? So never cute. So honestly, anyone in the chat right now, answer this question. How do you become an iOS dev without books? For anyone that's like a decent developer, they'll tell you that they never rely on books. And if you, if you come from the mindset of like traditional education, I understand why you would expect books to help. But uh, traditional education is just a business that kind of perpetuates this lie of selling you books. If you get out of this mindset of thinking that books are actually important, like books are not important. Everything's free on the internet. You don't have, you don't need a book. And yes, if you guys uh, don't know it already or can't get a sense of it, uh, education systems kind of a rip, a rip off. So you know, you go to you you go to higher education. You pay two hundred dollars for a book. That that's crazy. I remember doing that, and then like just copying the books and like going to the local copy machine stores. And I, I remember the professor specifically specifically told us to do this, where uh, he would actually have a copy of the the actual book for the entire semester. And I think the professor made physical copies of the book himself. And then he, he printed out multiple copies for every student in the, in the lecture. And for the students that didn't have the book, he would just give out the, the pages of the book. Now, I don't know if that's legal. I don't think the professor is, <laughs> I don't think the professor is allowed to do this, but that's what he did because he also felt like, um, because typically what happens in a school system is they release books every like two to three years. And what they do is when they release a new book, the, the school has to update the syllabus to use the new book. And then the new book doesn't really have a whole lot of changes. They, they just shift the chapters around and change the text here and there with some corrections and, you know, minor stuff like that. And they sell you the new book and they say that, oh yeah, you can't use the old book, which is 95% the same exact material. And then they, uh, yeah, this entire whole system is broken and the professors know it. 
So some of the good professors actually help out the students and say, okay, don't buy this book. I'll just help you photocopy the necessary material. Save yourself $150. Pretty awesome. Um, so, <laughs> okay, so we got some really good answers here. Really, really good answers from the chat. So uh, Alex C says to just build something, and I do agree, just build something on your own. Um, Hands-on made me learn more than any book would teach me. So that, that applies to everything in life, to everything in life except for maybe like philosophy or physics or something. Um, build something, use Stack Overflow, <laughs> Brian's video courses, and Google. Uh, have I ever read clean code from Martin? So when you get into higher level and more abstract topics, that's when books actually come in handy. If you're just starting out learning how to build something, everything, like 100% of what you need is already free online. When you make that initial investment and you get everything that you need for free first, uh, it's then that you want to start purchasing the, the books that go into very niche topics that only like more senior developers will even start to think or talk about. Um, am I working alone? Yeah, for the most part. I've been considering hiring, uh, hiring contractors for design work, but lately I've been doing des design work myself and I find that it's actually not too bad. So I might just do it myself. Um, David Kisby says that uh, I never bought a book to learn any programming language. Uh, everything I know is thanks to google.com. So google.com, the best professor, the best teacher, the best everything in the world is google.com. They do some strange business practices every now and then, but for the most part, Google is the best thing to, uh, to happen to us. Who knows, maybe they'll, they'll, be the, uh, they'll be responsible for the destruction of humankind. It's possible, it's totally possible that Google.com will be the reason why humans get wiped off the, uh, the face of the planet. Uh, container view controller, better way to use it for reference of Android fragment. Ooh, the last time, if you guys haven't ever dealt with a, with an Android fragment, uh, you guys are lucky. I mean, it's not that bad, but it, it there's a lot of headache involved in Android development. I feel like every time I switch from Android to iOS, I, 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 I kind of see like, oh man, this is a really... Doing it on this platform is so much better than this platform. And then I, I start to flip as I, as I work more and more inside of that language. Like iOS is be the best thing, right? And then you start programming using Android and you realize how much, there are certain things that are just so much easier. And then you start seeing the flaws of Android and then you go back to iOS and you know, it's a constant flip flop. Uh, join a program to teach hands-on, yeah. Hands-on, um, all the way, hands down, hands-on. That's uh, my answer. Uh, can I connect a remote MongoDB directly without a central server? Yeah, I mean, as long as you have internet connection, anything's connectable. Uh, would would I want to do that? Would I want to expose my MongoDB to the client like that? Probably not. Uh, you would have to open up the the like the client would have to hold the password and the login connection credentials. I I, I wouldn't want that on my client side. It's a little scary if you think about it. Uh, let's see. When can someone consider themselves a senior? I don't know. That's a pretty, that's a really abstract question. 
is really general. Uh, I'll, I'll leave that up to you guys to answer. What do you guys think a senior developer, what qualifications does a senior have that's, that's different from a junior or mid-level? You know, chances are if you're asking that question, you're still a junior developer. Uh, books are okay for reference, but not so much actually learning a language. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Looked up different interview experiences from people applying for junior and senior jobs that gave me an idea what to expect. Yep. Just look at job postings and you'll get a good sense of what technologies are needed for a senior developer. Uh, your videos and courses helped me a lot to make my app. Uh, now release an app store and a Play Store. If you want, you can try it for free. It's called uh, five tips, five tips. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll check it out later. Mm, official documentation is, is good too. Sometimes hard to read the official docs, but I think it's, I think it's fine. So what did I study in, uh, university? So I studied a lot of things. I studied applied mathematics, um, computer science, uh, industrial engineering and what else did I study? I think those are the main things. Um, I eventually got my major in applied mathematics. Did I enjoy it? No. I think I hated 90% of my university experience. Um, <laughs> so, so Alex C says that I think beginners tend to get too caught up on having study materials and the right study materials to learn code. Uh, if they just jumped in and started coding, they'd be on their way to progressing. I 100% wholeheartedly agree to what you're saying here, Alex. Uh, you know, I've, I've been in this boat also gathering like constantly just gathering things to study without actually studying it or doing the hands-on work necessary so best thing to do is like stop stop amassing material from people and just start doing it like let's say you you want to learn like some kind of language maybe you want to learn russian or spanish or french or japanese you actually have to start doing it. You can't just collect books on these languages and expect it to help you. It doesn't work that way. Like programming is, is, is like a muscle that you have to work out. That's the best way that I can describe it. It's not like, it's not like studying math or studying physics and studying stuff and memorizing it. That's what's broken about the school system. Like no one cares that you memorize this thing if you can't apply it and actually use it, then who gives a shit? It's just useless knowledge that's in your head for like a year or two until you forget it. School's broken. Um, MongoDB acquiring a realm, is this good for MongoDB or bad for realm? So that's a good question. Uh, I think that, uh, here's what I'll say. Uh, whenever a company is acquired, it's either not profitable enough to make any type of money back for their investment, or they have uh, people, that, I guess the stakeholders of the company just don't feel like the future is bright for the company, so they'll decide to sell it. Um, it seems like because of the the actual transaction price and what they're offering from MongoDB, feels like that's the case. Because if Realm was able to make uh, any substantial amount of money, they would they would have a higher asking price than just thirty million uh, thirty nine million dollars, where they they actually only raised forty million dollars for that company. So. And also the last time I was there, like I didn't really get the sense that they were, they were progressing at a fast pace. 
Um, and also, Realm was founded about five years ago, right? Like some sometime between five to ten years ago, when mobile was like this really hot topic, and before Firebase was available, and like it's not really that exciting of a industry to be in anymore. That's that's kind of the problem. The hype has died down with like mobile data storage and persistence. Uh, what's my standard on Xamarin? I uh, never used it, but uh, I like using C Sharp. So yeah, for, for whatever that's worth. I think C Sharp is a fine language. Uh, almost done with my beer. How much do I have left? So when I finish my beer, I'm gonna end the stream. We've been on for 45 minutes. Uh, I recently bought a bunch of stuff for uh, recording, I guess just recording equipment in general. And <laughs> it's not like this really helps the stream or helps the, the recording process. Well, what has helped is this boom mic here. So you guys can't really see it, but this is on like a, a microphone stand. And yeah. This actually does help, but I bought this new light that I'm not sure does anything. Uh, it just makes me extremely hot when I turn it up. Uh, what are my thoughts on cross-platform frameworks? Do you think this could ever replace writing native code? It's amazing how many people come in and ask this question. I guess I, I did make that video on Flutter and it's pretty popular on the channel. I, I kind of wish I never made that video because this question just comes up so, so frequently now. Yeah, I kind of wish I never made that video. <laughs> um, Brian, you have so many followers in Kazakhstan and also in CIS region. Do you expect that in the beginning? Uh, did I expect that in the beginning? Sometimes teachers in our programming schools recommend your courses. Wow, really? Kazakhstan, Dovakin Rodo. Huh, that's, that's great, that's awesome. Um, I know a lot of people, like a lot of people have taken the courses. The website does really well, that, but that's what allows me to just sit here and keep on producing more videos. And, uh, Initially, uh, I don't know. Do you guys want to hear my full YouTube, how I got started story and what my, my ultimate, um, initial motivations were? It's a really long story. I don't think I can ever tell the whole thing or I'm not even sure it's that interesting in the first place. Uh, do I have to be good at math in order to be a software engineer? Uh, uh, what do I want to say about these types of questions? If you're curious about whether or not you need to be X to be Y, just try X and see if you can be Y. If you can be Y without having X, then there you go. There's your answer. You don't need to ask anyone that question because the answer they give you won't even apply to your specific scenario. I can give you I, I can give you a yes for this question and a no and they'll be both correct. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is just figure things out on your own. <laughs> I know I tell that to people a lot and it's probably not like the best thing to tell people when they ask me questions. I think the reason why I tell people to figure things out on their own is because uh, uh, most developers in the, the working profession, they had to figure things out on their own. And that's probably the best way of doing it. Like, like google.com, figure it out and you're good. Don't have someone tell you to like think a certain way. That's, yeah, that's not what you want to do. 
Uh, so let's see, Nervikeet says that for me, learning through practice has always been the fastest and the best process. And at some point, I got stuck to books. Uh, frankly, I spent a lot of time reading books on development. Maybe I don't know what I'm trying to find here or there. Yeah. Yeah. So whenever I like stumble across a programming book, I open it up and I find a couple of like interesting topics. I read over it and I was like, oh, okay, that, that's something that I never thought about and maybe I'll apply it in my projects. Um, but yeah, I, I think the reason why I hate books is when I want to apply the actual code, I can't copy and paste from the book. And that kind of sucks. So even PDF files doesn't really work. Mm, REST API node, Golang, or something else. Mm. Mm -hmm -hmm. Mm. Uh, let's see, Brennan Hamster says, is there a reason why you choose to do Swift mobile dev tutorials rather than a web languages that uh, there is a, uh, there is more of a job demand for? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, this kind of gets back into why I, I decided to start a Swift channel. I guess long story short, uh, long story short, I was a, uh, like I was a professional mobile developer before starting this YouTube channel. So that's one reason why it's heavily focused on Swift. Uh, the other reason is, I don't know. They're both fascinating and they're both very exciting fields to be in. I do agree there's a bigger job demand for JavaScript developers. Uh, I feel like the pay is a little bit lower for for web devs. Uh, mobile, mobile development is more exciting to me at least. And I don't know if that's necessarily true. I like web development just as much and sometimes I like it even more. Um, if I were to do it all over again, would I still choose to be in mobile development for this channel? That's, I don't know. I don't know if I would do it again with Swift. Um, but that's kind of why I left the channel more, I, I it's kind of broad. There's like, there's a lot going on here, but yeah, you're right, mostly Swift. Uh, been good listening to you while I tried my first client project in Django. Nice. Learned from a couple of YouTube videos for the basics. I'm referring to the official docs when I get stuck. Yeah. Uh, everything that you need, it's literally, you got to think about learning programming, um, similar to learning how to do basic arithmetic and then advancing to multiplications and fractions and division. Where is there like nexus algebra and uh, geometry. So if you can't figure out one plus one in the programming world, then you're, you're not going to be able to figure out the rest of it. Uh, Sir German Guzlad Thorsen. Am I, am I pronouncing that correctly? Uh, the best teacher does not tell people what the answer is, but where to look. Indeed. Agreed. Uh, tried out server side Swift before. If yes, which do you prefer most times? Uh, I prefer neither. Yeah. Again, I mentioned this before in previous live streams. But if you want to learn backend, don't don't learn Swift backend. Honestly. It's much easier with other other tools. And everything in the the Swift framework like Perfect or Vapor, you'll see this comment a lot. Um 
kind of emphasizing that these frameworks are super magical. You don't know truly what's going on behind it. Okay, so Kayla C. Um, Kayla, I, I, is that a female name? Um, so Kayla says, I attended a boot camp a couple of years ago, and it was such an evangelist waste of money. Uh, your courses are so much cheaper, uh, so much meatier and cheaper and more sensible than the bootcamp I paid an eye and a leg for. I think the, the, the comment, the phrase is an arm and a leg. An arm and a leg? Now you got me confused. <laughs> an eye and a leg. I guess maybe you're paying more if you're giving up your eye. Or I don't know. Is that true? You have two arms and two eyes. Hmm. I guess I, I would give up my arm before I would give up my eye. Eh. I'm thinking about that one. Okay. That's interesting. If I lost my arm, I wouldn't be able to program with only one arm. But if I lost one eye, I could still look out the other eye. And that means I can still program with two arms and one eye. So I guess two arms is more valuable than, than two eyes, right? I mean, you'll, you'll be pretty screwed up with one eye, but I feel like you can get used to, you can reorient yourself to get used to having one eye. Huh, interesting. Uh, just found that video about um, Flutter. Maybe I'll do some Flutter courses. If I if I stop wasting time on these live stream chats, then maybe I'll do something productive. With one eye, you lose the 3D perception. Yeah, that's kind of true. Is that true? Yeah. I think I could live without one eye. <laughs> Odin gave up one eye for all the wisdom in the world. Yeah, I think I might do that too. <laughs> I like the live stream chats though. I'm just kicking it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm almost done with my beer. And I'm going to have to go to the bathroom real soon. Okay, so, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, recently um, people were pirating my course and uh, they pirated the App Store course on Udemy or someone, I guess someone paid for it or I don't know. I don't know how they got their hands on all the videos and then they published it on Udemy.com. Uh, quite a few people went on that course and purchased that pirated course and I filed a takedown claim on that course um, and had that course taken down. So if anyone ever finds a course of mine that's not on letsbuildthatapp.com, then just know that that course has been pirated. This happens. Uh, there's not a whole lot that I want to do about it other than apply for a takedown D DMCA, DCMA, DMCA claim, and just have the course taken down. Um, I'm not going to like waste too much of my time dealing with those types of issues because it's really hard to, to, to enforce rules on the internet, right? Um, and like, to be honest, you know, we've all downloaded music before, right? Is that... It's pretty fair to say we've all downloaded things from the internet without having to pay for it. And that's just, that's just the, the, the way things work. And, you know, I, I hopefully have gotten the respect from people online that want to actually support what I do so that I can provide more content to help you even more in the future. And that hopefully uh, can continue on for the next couple of years. Uh, like, I, I really honestly want to help people as much as possible. Uh, the ultimate thing I want to do is to pr provide good education for a really affordable price. And ultimately, if, like, if I have enough content on the website where people don't even have to go to school anymore, 
like let's say you're 18 years old, you want to be a professional programmer, you can just literally take all these courses on my website and you can be a pretty decent developer. I don't know, what's that, like two, $300? Um, you don't have to waste four years of your life going to college for what people call like getting more well-rounded education. That's, that's BS. Uh, it's, it, that's just marketing. And yeah, hopefully I can, I can take down the entire school system before they take me down. Um, do not worry about piracy. It steals your energy and look at it like some sort of advertisement. I, I, I've, I have come to that conclusion as well. Ger, German, am I pronouncing German? I'm gonna say German. Guslan Thorsen. Do you know about Odin because your last name is Thor? Odin is the god of thunder. Thor is also the god of thunder. How does that work? Is Odin the father of Thor? Hmm. Your, I, I remember you from uh, your profile picture because that's such an awesome like photo. I wish I could grow my beard out like you. But unfortunately, my, my Asian genes have not allowed that to happen. Maybe I can do something about it. Uh, am I planning to release web dev tutorials? Mm, aside from the, the two React JS courses that I've put out on the website, on the channel so far, um, aside from those two videos, I don't know if I'm gonna put out any more web dev tutorials. We'll see though for the future of LBTA. <laughs> uh, mix Spanish and English. We say I paid an eye off my face. Yeah, we say we say we paid an arm and arm and leg. German, a warrior of the world, Guslan, Fertile Grounds, Thorson, son of Thor. That's an awesome name, man. How long does it take to be a junior? I was dev for beginner on average. Uh, could take a month, could take a year. Really depends on your pace. It really depends. I, hmm. Hmm. You can, you can literally become a really decent developer in a month. If I had someone, if I held a boot camp, maybe I'll do this one day. I'll hold a boot camp and I'll charge people, I don't know, like $5,000 to attend my boot camp. And I will guarantee you, I will guarantee you that when you come out of my boot camp for, let's say 10 weeks, a 10 week boot camp. I can probably guarantee that you'll you'll land a job somewhere. If you can't, then that's not my fault. You have to sign a waiver before you attend my bootcamp. Uh, uh, do I have any paid Android tutorials? I'm thinking about releasing Something similar to like Instagram, Android. Do you also think that everyone can rely on Firebase? Uh, mostly not. Like Firebase is useful and I've taught two to three courses using Firebase. But to be honest, if you wanna fully rely on something to support your entire company, I would say 
Firebase is a good first step, and then eventually you will need to move on to something else. I'd say that you should do things with Firebase first if you don't know a, a different type of backend programming language, and then move on from there. You don't want to waste your time and money on hiring a backend person if, if you don't have any users. Uh, I look sleepy. You know what happens? I wake up every day, so there's my bedroom right behind this wall right here. I wake up every day, and then I just walk around this wall here. I walk around this wall, and then I come sit down here, and I, I start working. And typically, my day starts, I don't know, what, 8 o'clock? No, that's at 8.30. I wake up at about 8.30, kind of. Uh, I wake up, look at the emails. How many of you guys look at email? Uh, look at your phones every... Uh, why am I asking? I know like 100% of you guys do this, right? You have your phone next to your bed. Whenever you wake up, you turn on your phone, you look at all your notifications, see if you have any important emails to answer to. And then you waste, what, half an hour just doing, <laughs> doing, what do you even call this process? The, the morning wake up ritual where you check your phone for useless notification updates and other, other useless information that you can check later. So, you know, I do that for half an hour. It's really dumb. I find that, you know, if, if we can somehow remove that whole routine out of our mornings of just checking your phone, like some way, somehow someone's going to come up with a way to expedite that process so that it just gets injected into our head once we wake up. Like we need to jack our phone into our head, get the information just jacked into our brains so that we don't have to waste half an hour going through that, that material. That'd be nice. Or maybe we can have some kind of TV in our bathroom mirror and we jack our phone into this, this LED TV. It goes through all, everything for us while we like, while we sit in the bathroom and do our thing. Someone's got to come up with that. Do a video on how to sort section by date and time using core data. <laughs> now the beer is stuck. I kind of like this beer. Uh, buy your basic Kindle training course. Uh, we'll start next week. Awesome. Awesome. You know, you can start all of the, like the, the videos on this channel are also super helpful. Um, yeah. One thing I'll say is that I, uh, how do I put this? Uh, I'm not the best teacher when it comes to learning basic beginner material. There's probably a lot of different channels, teachers, content online that does a much better job at it than I do. Because honestly, I don't like focusing. I, I don't like, I don't like telling people how to put a button on the screen. It's, it's kind of boring for me. Nice, Amazing World just bought that to support you. Thanks, man. Of course, I'll start your other courses later. Cool. I mean, I hope you, I hope you make it through. I, I know that I don't explain, I don't explain things. So, uh, when I started this channel, um, I used to have this link where people would uh, come in or I used to have this um, this mentoring link where people would book me for an hour and they would, you know, ask me questions and have me answer the questions. And I realized that a lot of the questions were really basic and easy. Like they would ask things like, well, what happens with the main thread and what's this background thread? Uh, like, how do I manage a thread and 
make sure that things update correctly on the UI. Like questions like this, they would ask me and I realized, oh, maybe I should talk about this stuff on, on the videos and go into more detail. But I feel like if you're watching my videos, you mostly, you most likely know this stuff already. So I like to spend my, my time talking about things that have never been talked about that much before. Uh, if I, if, if I ever have to, so I used to teach every year, uh, a bunch of students in Shanghai, how to program, like how to learn iOS programming from the basics. And, you know, you start with the storyboard, you start with some basic table views and buttons and all that. Uh, not my, not my thing. I did that for two years and I mean, I would do it if it wasn't so far, if I didn't have to fly to Shanghai and do the teaching, I would do it again. But the 14 hour flight is just killer. If it was maybe like New York, I would do it every year. But then I would probably complain about something else. I like to complain. Um, yeah, so when I, when I teach this, the students in Shanghai, I actually do teach with the storyboard because the, the people that really like the videos that I make are people that have somewhat of a, like a, some decent knowledge of how a storyboard works already. Like people, uh, people that watch my videos have a, a fun foundation already. I assume that. And I have to teach this foundation to the high school students. If you don't, you know, you, you can imagine just going in there. So two years ago, the first time I taught at the Shanghai boot camp, I, I went in and I started coding and programming. And I just started typing like mad typing on the, the keyboard in front of a class of 30 students. And I had like a, 20 lines of code on the screen. And I can look, I looked, looked out on the sea of faces that were just, what's going on? What did I get myself into? I, I can literally see the the reaction of all the students the very first half hour of the, the lecture. And, you know, keep in mind, this was like a 12 day boot camp. And I kind of saw it was uh, people are, are not really going to understand what's going on with just pure code. So I just kind of took things down or took things a little bit slower and uh, decided to use the the storyboard instead because it was easier. Yeah. Yeah, you have to you have to understand things visually and then start to do other things. Like the the reason why I teach code only is not because I hate the storyboard. It's really because I I want to do other things. So I I think I've said this before, but I find UI to be very trivial. And I like doing other things like, you know, setting up your Firebase database, going through that code, setting up your photo fetching framework, going through that code, setting up the camera. You have to go through a lot of code. You know, most of the things that you do that's interesting is just pure code. I don't like, I don't, I don't like spending time on UI, to be honest. It's one of the more boring parts of programming, actually, to me anyways. Uh, do you teach students in Chinese in Shanghai? Shanghai. I Shanghai to Shanghai to No, no, no. Uh, so when I teach uh, in Shanghai, I teach in um, mostly English, like 99% English. Because I can barely talk about this stuff clearly in plain English. How am I going to even describe it in Chinese? Li uh, Hai Na. Li Hai. Li Hai. If you guys want to learn some Chinese, Li Hai means like awesome or that's awesome, dude. That's what that translates to. Can you guys tell that I'm from California? I say dude a lot. Do I say dude a lot? Dude, man, I say man a lot. That's a California thing I, I, I would expect. Uh. 
Okay, so Ramesh says that uh, I have started by watching first videos from a cool designer, Meng Tu. So I, I, Meng Tu has some really good designs and his website's like really good. I really like the way he, he puts the, uh, his websites together and the way he designs is, is nice. Uh, and so you bought, so you went, so you took the videos from Meng Tu and yeah, he teaches storyboards. Then I bought the App Store course. And from that day, I hate storyboard. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a process. The thing that's, um, difficult about storyboards is it's really hard to teach, teach like more complicated UI with the storyboards. And the main reason is because you have to switch context between the actual storyboard file and then the code. If you do this too much, I find that you will lose a lot of people because you have to, the screen literally changes from one page or one like layout thing, interface builder to the actual code. And that's difficult. Like I, I don't know how to do that efficiently to go from uh, IB to code, like dragging this line to this IB action thing here. It's impossible. Uh, and doing that in person is much easier. You know, in Shanghai where I can walk up or students walk up to me with their laptops. And now that I think about it, I kind of want to go back and, and do the Shanghai thing again. But I already said no to the, the people that are organizing it. Because it's really fun. I, I really miss in-person interaction with people and their laptops. And, 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 uh, trying to debug a MacBook Air laptop that has the enter key broken, the space key working 50% of the time, and the command key like doing the control button. <laughs> You'll be amazed at how broken people's keyboards are on their screens and how slow their machines are. Oh my God, that's one thing I don't want to do when I go back to Shanghai. To just, to like, to, 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 to debug a slow MacBook Air computer that doesn't function correctly. It's the hardest thing in the world. So whenever I had someone like bring me their problems, I would sometimes just tell them, just send me the code. Like send me the zip file, I'll open it on my computer and then I'll debug it with you on my machine. That's what I did. Uh, if you do an iOS bootcamp, I'm sure you would get plenty of students. I thought about that. I honestly thought about opening a bootcamp. Um, if I do open up a bootcamp, I would need someone else to do it with me. And I mean, I do have someone in mind that can help me do it. Uh, do an in-class, uh, in-person class in the Bay. How many people would actually show up though? I remember when I started this channel for the first year, I, I held three meetups and it was good. It was a good turnout. We had, we had at least 20 people per meetup, which is pretty good for a coding meetup. Uh, I used to have a classmate who uses a 12 inch MacBook for iOS development. There's nothing super wrong with a 12 inch MacBook. It works. I've seen worse, like a, an 11 inch MacBook Air. Imagine how bad that would be. Um, yeah, so it looks like German has some XML translation tool for storyboards. Interesting. Uh, what about Sean Allen? He might help you. Uh, I think he's busy though. He has a full-time job, so he's pretty busy. I don't think I would want to teach anymore. Do I want to teach? 
Mm. The problem with them, um, the biggest problem with teaching programming right now in person is that what I want to say when you're teaching in person, you can't pause the video, like you can't pause the teacher, and you can't re watch the, the teacher teach the certain parts of the lecture that you didn't follow, right? So I find that not being able to just pause and digest the information, that's that's a huge issue with in-person lectures. And that's kind of why video platforms have taken off. You know, you can watch a teacher either slow him down, pause him, follow along, speed him up. All of these options help learning so much. And I use these features all the time. Like I'll watch someone program, I'll pause the video, look up documentation, follow on someone else's video, and then go back to the first one. And, you know, there's so many different things that you can do while you're sitting in front of a computer. And if like, if there was some way to make it easy to teach in person and then also record the content so that you can have it for later uh, playback for the students, that's, that would be ideal. That would be ideal. Um, could you do like an intermediate or advanced bootcamp only, which would maybe make it more fun for you to do since it's devs who already have a base knowledge. So here's what I would do. And you can feel free to steal my idea for, for my vision of a bootcamp because it's, it's not that easy to implement. And I think it would be awesome. It would take off. You would earn like millions of dollars if you can do it correctly. So <clears throat> the idea behind a really good bootcamp is all you have to do, it's really simple. All you have to do is provide some kind of, provide a challenge for the students. This is intermediate to somewhat advanced, like developers already learning Swift, right? So we don't talk about basic shit like, how to draw a button and how to do auto layout. We don't talk about that stuff. All I do is I provide you with a, an API and the API is going to be something like, uh, like a Snapchat API, uh, a Facebook API, a Instagram API, and this is a rest API it comes back in JSON data format. And we will probably have like 20 to 30 endpoints. And for that API, I just give that to you and I tell you, okay, starting from day one, you have to build out the entire Facebook application to make sure it works, everything loads correctly. You have to handle the loading phase, the no internet connection, uh, everything under, under the sun, you have to understand how to implement correctly and you have to do it on your own. If you have any questions, then you have to come to me later with your questions and that's it. And then I just sit back and watch you kind of struggle through like three weeks, four weeks to integrate the API, make sure that everything looks correct, behaves correct, and is smooth, doesn't hang, no freezing the UI, uh, make sure that bad connections are handled, and that'd be it, that'd be the bootcamp. And if you can't get a job after you pass a bootcamp like that, then I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what else I can do to help you. The other thing that's like a, like what will really hold you back is these data structures questions. All right. So I've just finished this beer and I'm on the lower floor of my apartment. So there's two, two stories and the fridge is up there. So I don't feel like going up there and grab another beer. So I think I'm done. I don't want my handheld brilliant because uh, that struggle is what is going to force you to learn. Exactly. Um, so before the boot camp, <laughs> before students can actually enter the boot camp, you'll have to sign a waiver. And the boot camp is, I would say at the very minimum, I would charge like $5,000 for this boot camp. And at the max, maybe like ten to $15,000 per student. We'll have to see. Uh, you know, whatever makes sense for, for my time. And then... You just have to build the app. It's 
really it's literally let's build that app together and the real thing I want to sort of uh, bread beer makes gas you know it does <laughs> this type of beer doesn't really do that too much but uh, I can't say that I, I haven't experienced that go and grab another beer we'll wait uh, have you got time to review a weather app I wrote it's on GitHub feel free to point out my ears uh, I don't know if I want to do any reviews especially after I just had my beer you know you, you get into this different mood when you have alcohol in your system maybe you can you guys can tell already uh, when you plan to put a new course on your site, I mean, just code without the whole videos. So, ah, uh, so just code without the videos. Um, well, so we're going to learn how to, uh, just build out, build out courses without the actual videos. Uh, when am I going to have something like that on the website? Um, what is it? April now. So my, my er, uh, initial original schedule was to release this by mid April. Obviously that didn't happen. Uh, so many things to do. So little time. You can review it at your free time, no rush. <laughs> Sounds like work now. <laughs> it's definitely work. The nice thing about this channel and this whole this whole business is that I so I actually enjoy doing all this. To someone else, it's probably like they probably won't be able to enjoy any of this process. But I enjoy it. And that's that's why I've been able to do it for three years. And it's honestly, I would have done this. It's kind of a hobby. When you can do a when you can have your hobby be your full time job, it doesn't feel like work. At least not for the first couple of years. Um, I would love it. One little video to explain a bit about the structure of the classes, etc. So I plan on I plan on using a lot of more advanced components inside of these these courses or these projects that I plan to sell. I haven't come to a like conclusion on how to put together these advanced components yet. That's kind of what's holding me back. Now, I have to put together videos on the YouTube channel that um, allow me to explain the more complicated scenarios that we run into with these advanced components. And then uh, I'll be ready to release the courses. I think I'll just introduce another section on the website, like completed projects. I think that's what I'm settled on. I'm settling on the name of completed projects on the left menu and then inside of completed projects we'll have like you know starting out we'll have three projects and then every week I'll try to release one new one and I have a lot of different things that I want to do with that idea just executing is you know execution is always the hardest thing here okay so we are at an hour and 29 minutes now. I am out of beer and definitely looking forward to the future. Yeah, it'll be fun. Um, it was fun today. I think maybe I'll have like a, a bottle of wine next time. And maybe I'll have a whole bottle of wine and I'll, I'll try to finish the bottle of wine. 
if any of you guys uh, any of you guys want to send me a bottle of wine to try out on the live streams I have to get like a PO box so that you guys can send me things uh, next I bring bring a couple of bottles um, okay last question I'll answer here is how hard was it to build your YouTube channel to 150k subs so it really depends on what you want to do with your channel uh, you'll see other channels that pop up that get to 100k in I don't know like three months and their their content is much more interesting I would say I don't really care about making content that's that's like shallow interesting how do I put that you know videos like oh what's the latest uh, uh, super clickbaity videos like the top 10 languages to learn in 2019 you don't want to miss out on this video you know things like that I don't really like putting out those type of videos so I know they're they're like interesting but I mean, who really cares what the 10 top languages are? You'll, you'll learn what you want to learn. No one really cares. It's just very sensational and clickbaity. Here's another one. What do I think about this, uh, the solid pattern of programming? Should you implement it? What the professional developers aren't telling you? Click here now. Or... At first, I had at first I didn't use a solid pattern, but when I did, these companies started paying me this much. Click click this video to learn more. I used a program in Native Swift, but the moment I switched to Flutter, I was contacted by Amazon, Google. Microsoft, Microsoft's not a good company anymore. Uh, Uber and Apple. Here's why. So I was, you know, after um, uh, after April Fools this year, I, I came up with these ideas to make these troll meme, meme videos. And next year, okay, I'll make a video like that next year on, on April 1st. So now that you guys know what to expect next year we'll see how many people get like f fooled it'll be fun uh yeah just you know i've considered doing more of those types of videos uh the thing is i'm really bad at writing scripts and i don't like script writing because i'm like i said bad at it so i don't do it it's not really my like strong suit, so I don't really do it. Uh, but yeah, that's it for today's video. Will Lang says I will send you some Wu 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 uh, Liang Yi Wu Liang Yi. What's Wu Wu Liang? This is uh, eat food's Liang Liang Shi, right? Yi Yi Ti's Yi. Yeah, yi, yi ti yi, yi gai shi ba. <laughs> Bao yi sa, zhong wen hen cha. Wu liang, yi, zhe shi yi ba. Eh, zhen me na me xiang yi. Bai jiu, zhong guo de hao, hao jiu. Zhong guo ming jiu, wa. Zhen me na duo ren xi wang he jiu a zai zhe. All right, we're gonna turn this into the, the Chinese stream for now. White white wine brand. Uh, I'm gonna we're gonna look at we're gonna look at a Chinese wine for for the rest of today. Wu Niang, Wu Liang, Wu Niang. All right, if you guys are interested in Chinese wine, here's here's what you gotta get. Wu Liang Ye. This is Yi, ba. So Yi is Yi, ah. Ye Yi. Not Yi Ti's Yi, ma. Hey, how is Chinese so 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 bad? Ah, Zhongqiu Yue Yuan Wu Liang Ye Yu Ni. 
a new epoch of prosperity and boom. 新时代国运昌 Man, this Chinese is really hard to read. 什么新时代？呃，喝彩，喝彩，金丁高质量，质量发展，工。I can't even read Chinese that fast. Oh my god. 液体，那液体。How do you write 液体 then? Oh my god. Okay, new tab, new tab, new tab. Okay, nothing too embarrassing here. Uh, 液体，液体，液体吧，液体，液体。哼，我还真以为是液体呢。台湾独液，大陆独液。哦呃、uh, ，John Appleseed says hello, Brian. I bought some of your courses. I appreciate them, but I wonder why you don't con、uh, don't you concern about creating a manager for Firebase? So the reason why I don't have a manager for Firebase is because、uh, the code that you introduce for a manager, you you don't save a ton of code actually. So that's one reason, and I feel like, um, yeah. In in the code that I prepare for the Firebase courses, I do have a manager, or I don't have a manager, but I have extension methods that make it easier. Yeti is my skip of Nick. E T, ah, because I, because I hear my speaking, a little like like Taiwan people speak, right? Because I used to watch TV when I was young, I used to watch TV all the time. 常常看那种台湾节目的，所以讲话有点像台湾人讲话。虽然我不是台湾人，但是讲话是这样，有点台湾腔，对吧？ Do I have any plans to add subscription to your website to get full courses? Um, at this point, I don't think I can go back to any like subscription model because everyone has paid. For the the courses already, so I, I don't think it'll be fair for people that already have the courses.、Um, there might be like a different. Yeah, I don't know. I've thought about that a lot、uh, the past year or so. I've really come to a conclusion as to how to tackle that problem. <laughs> Looks like I need to start learning Chinese to understand the end of streams. Yeah, maybe. Oh man, didn't I say I was gonna end the stream already? This is what beer does to you. You, you just start babbling on.、Uh, not go back. Add it for new people. So, like, can't really add it for just new people. Uh, 过两个月你就。东北话十级了。Let me try to read this in in my my 北京腔。过过两个月，过两个月，你就东北话十级了。东北话十级了。有有像吗？不像吧。<笑>哎，我我来试一下这个。哎，台湾台湾独业，大陆独业，好像好像好像是台湾的读法。这个这个说话，北京人说话就是有带来这种腔调是吧？有有像北，哎，怎么说来就好像。<笑>嗯，好像高了一个音，嗯，就有点搞笑，有点有点北京味儿，北京味儿，有点北京北京腔，嗯、呃，就模仿模仿一下啦，嗯、呃，希望不会呃，什么见怪。
稍稍稍稍稍就稍微稍稍微稍微有点北京腔的感觉。我就是我就是北京人，说话是是是，哎，是这么说话的，是这么说话的。就是北京人就喜欢说那种啊啊啊，是是这样吧？啊，啊<笑>、uh, ，Do you speak Chinese at home growing up, or do you learn it later in life? Um, uh, so you know a little bit of uh like a different Chinese dialect in at home, and later on learned how to speak more formal. Uh, professional、uh, standard Chinese is what you would call it. So yeah, in the mainland, they speak standard Chinese. 确实有点像呢，确实有点像呢。说话就是这样。未来的我，在每一个啊时哎直播直播时候，说话带来。这种腔呀，你们哎，你们说话有点像老外。你们每一个人说话都是这样，反正有点唱歌的一种味道，味道。呃，张张亚不记得 rice wine hit him hard。Maybe I get some white wine, uh, rice wine, white, right? Ah,、uh, can't even speak anymore. Uh, family spoken Italian dialect at home, which I can understand, but、uh, can I speak formal Italian? Yeah, it's hard. If you don't practice like language speaking or language learning,、uh, language acquisition, your your entire life trying to speak a second language is nearly impossible.、Um, aside from being able to carry a, a somewhat basic fundamental conversation with people, like trying to talk about. Something hard like computer science or politics or, you know, something scientific and technical. If you don't have the vocabulary to do that, it's very hard to do so. Uh, 有没有微信公众号？呃、uh, ，我有微，我有微信，但没有什么公众号，也不会，也不会。也不不太会弄微信这个东西啊，我也很少用微信。呃、uh, ，especially when the conversation gets really fast. Yeah. I find it especially difficult when you want to say something in in that language, but. You only know how to say it in your own language. You don't have the the vocabulary to to express that same meaning in the second language. That's that's the struggle that you have to you have to fight all the time, knowing how to say one thing in language A, but translating is difficult. Hmm. This looks hard to spell. <laughs> Watch this channel to learn iOS development and improve my English. Now I have to learn Chinese too. Yeah, man, it's a never-ending thirst for knowledge. Speaking of thirst, speaking of thirst, what do I do to quench my thirst for liquids? You know, every time I prepare recording a video, I have like three, either bottles, cups. So there's two cups here, water. There's some like leftover coffee that it's gonna taste pretty gnarly. Ah, actually not that bad. Yeah, instant mixed coffee. Not the worst thing in the world. Um. Okay, I think I'll be done for the rest of today's live stream, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. No, I'm not tomorrow. Maybe next week. Am I drunk? Not actually. I mean, if I got drunk on one beer, that'd be a really cheap date. But one beer is good. You you get a a nice kick from the beer. Yeah. So 
Uh, hey man, have a someone asked me this question about creating like a Slack chat or something like that. Um, maybe I'll do that. Maybe, maybe I should. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I should. And then I'll close it down if, if it gets too out of control. Discord better? Why is Discord better? I have both. I like the the voice chat of Discord. I don't know if that's worth. I'm not going to open two. Let's just put it that way. It's either Discord or Slack. Which one do you guys want? Discord. So... I also prefer Discord because of voice chat capabilities. Why do I like beer? Uh, I don't especially like beer, but anything that's not water, <laughs> anything is better than just plain water. Slack lags, Discord. Okay, how about I open up a Discord on this live channel? Ooh, we have some spicy chat in here. F your ass. Spicy. Spicy. Um, I sometimes write with CPP, C++, ooh, to contribute Swift on GitHub. Ooh. What has happened with your course on Udemy? Again, if you find any of my courses on anything other than letsbuildthatapp.com, you are purchasing or downloading pirated courses. So hopefully you can support me by not purchasing those items on other websites or downloading any content that's not on the website at let's build that app. Let's build that app.com. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I had uh, the course on Udemy taken down because someone had pirated that course and uploaded onto that platform. Udemy responded with that, um, with the takedown promptly within five days. So I do appreciate their cooperation on their end. And that's where I'm at right now. All right. Um, I will consider opening up a Discord chat. I'll see how it goes. And then, um, yeah, and then like, I don't have time to answer too many questions. That's, and I don't really feel like answering questions does a whole lot. Uh, <laughs> leave writing Swift, it will end up being a blue collar job. Um, well, if you believe that, I would suggest that, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of different things that you can do after you learn Swift, right? You can just program in some other language. It's like 90% of the ideas are the same. Uh, Discord is a Mac app. You can just download the Mac app, Discord. Uh, so Discord is just like this chat app that you download. It's like Slack. Right. Yep. So Alex Maverick uh, definitely does seem strange since, yes, I do not upload to Udemy. I don't want to have anything with, to do with Udemy. You guys, uh, you know, do your thing. There's probably a lot of good courses on Udemy that you can benefit from buying, watching, and just, you know, consuming that content. But I, I don't want to be enforced by Udemy rules. Okay, so, uh, uh, how do I even open a Discord chat? Okay, next live stream, I'll announce what the Discord chat link is, and then I'll let you guys know what what the Discord is, all right? So that's gonna be it for today. I will see you guys again next 
next week. Yeah, that's a 